So today I will talk about humanoid robots for symbiotic societies. Basically, I'm using this uh, umbrella term to introduce my postdoctoral research. And in particular, I will defend or advocate the interdisciplinary research in this direction. So to conduct research in this direction, first I need to set my goals. And here is uh, three uh, steps of uh, my goals. First, I am collaborating with psychologists and neuroscientists to extract core components of intelligent social interactions inspired from cognitive developmental systems and validate these uh, models by using either physically or virtually embodied agents. Oftentimes they are humanoid robots. By achieving first two goals, my last goal is to contribute to the future of symbiotic societies by making these robots more trustworthy for their interactions in society. So now we set our goals, but we need a research framework to achieve these goals. And this research framework comes from Cluster of uh, Excellence in Berlin. Here we had a uh, framework to collaborate with people from different disciplines. And this framework called Analytic and Synthetic Loops. To achieve this uh, uh, framework, first you have to define your goal as an interdisciplinary research team. And the goal is intelligent social behavior on humanoid robots. And this framework will enable to integrate knowledge between two different disciplines. The analytic sides, we have a psychology, neuroscience, a philosophy, and that kind of uh, disciplines. From the synthetic sides, we have more technical uh, fields like robotics, engineering. And not that this is not a theoretical or a conceptual framework. You are literally, as a roboticist, sitting next to neuroscientists or a psychologist to achieve this goal. And let's see what we achieved so far within this, within this uh, framework. And today I will bombard you a lot of uh, uh, different types of research. So if you have questions at the, in the Q&A session, we can go in detail. And the introduction of this research project will be quite superficial due to the time limit. So the first uh, project is assessing that whether humans are co-representing robots as a human or in a different way. Okay. From psychology literature, we know that if you are naming an entity or object within the same category, for each object, you become slower. Okay. Like, let's say I am uh, defining my favorite uh, game developers, starting from John Carmack, then Jonathan Blow. And with each uh, name, I become slower. And if I partner up with someone as a human, if uh, he or she named uh, uh, her favorite uh, game developers, I will show the same effect. I'll become slower. So this shows that we are somehow co-representing our partner's uh, speech. Then we integrate a humanoid robot in the setting to assess that. Okay, For the humans, yeah, this effect exists, but what about the robots? And surprisingly, we found that this effect does not imply for the robots. Uh, uh, quite uh, uh, yeah, quite surprising uh, fact. Uh, the robots, if you partner up with the robots, you become faster instead of become slower. And in another research, we go one step further and assess that what is the neural representation of the different interaction partners as a human, as a humanoid robot, and as a computer tower. So we create a, a simple uh, game experiment. The participant in the scanner interact with these three partners, and we record fMRI data from uh, the participants. And we assess that theory of mind network is activated for all of the agents, all of the interactive partners, but there is a ranking between them. Humans are more, uh, for the humans, it's more activated. Robots uh, ranked as a second, and computer tower ranked as a last one. So these are the most uh, interdisciplinary research that we conduct. Of course, we are also doing some pure robotic research. And uh, you see on the bottom left, in this setting, we are enabling uh, or creating a framework for our robots to achieve a heterogeneous interaction. By heterogeneous interaction, I mean the interaction partners has a different physicality and different cognitive levels. Okay? Like 
uh, one of the arm of the robot can be short or robot can uh, generate uh, different uh, sounds. That's the physicality. And this robot also can have a different type of ex uh, expert tasks. Like one can be <laughs> capable of uh, using, uh, yeah, using uh, uh, correct names for a specific, uh, specific uh, category, the other cannot. And of course, we have a uh, framework. We cannot blindly implement this framework onto robots and enable it it's to enjoy the freedom to live in the, our society. We need some guidelines, and we are in the process of creating a trust framework based on European and Japanese uh, ethics uh, uh, standards to make our robots more trustworthy. And later I will go in more detail. We also have another uh, ongoing projects, starting from robot robot scaffolding and designing a teacher robot by using the human teachers' uh, gestures and uh, realizing them on robots and employing them on classroom. And uh, on the bottom left, you are seeing the, one of the latest uh, uh, works. We are using a gated, gated uh, multimodal reinforcement learning in here. Here, the now robot interacts with three different partners. Each partner has a different skills. And now robot is differentiating skills of its partner. And tonight is a submission date of this paper, so wish me luck, I think, cross your fingers. The last project in here is uh, on the discussion level. We are planning to provide a robot as robot self based on infant literature. So in the infant literature, it is quite a uh, developmental uh, stage of the infant for acquiring a self. It's a staged. Like in the first stage, it has an ecological self. It cannot differentiate the action of others and action of itself. Everything confined in a single entity. In the interpersonal self, it can differentiate its own uh, her action and others' actions. At the last level, cognitive uh, self it can individuate the partners. And uh, this is still in the discussion level, and we are planning to provide a computational model of robot self in this sense. Okay. So up to now, I just abstractly mentioned about what we are doing, and I select a few examples to be more concrete for your questions. Here, what we are uh, trying to do, enable our uh, robots to interact heterogeneous partner as a human and as a robot. Okay. And heterogeneity is everywhere in the world. In this picture, this caricature you see in here, no two agents are same as a robot or as a human. Okay. So we shouldn't expect, uh, expect uh, our robot will interact the same partner or similar partner during their uh, lifetime. So to do this, we design a four-layered cognitive framework, a four-layer trust framework guided by ethics, ethics principle from European and Japanese one. But today I will not discuss about the ethical principles, just give a computational idea behind this framework. So for the cognitive level, we currently implement three different uh, <coughs> subcomponents, and I will introduce them in the next slides. So for the we first create an interaction uh, framework, and this framework requires th uh, three different uh, parts. In the first part, you have an agent. Agent should interact with the environment and the interaction partners by using their its uh, modules. And we have an environment. Environment is providing a task to the or agent. And task in here is to find a room or patterns which is less noisy for our robot to process. And during the interaction, uh, uh, interactive experiment robot interact with three different uh, partners with different physicality as a simulated agent, as a robotic agent, as a human agent, and with different guiding strategies, like a reliable partner, unreliable partner, and random partner. Reliable one, whenever robot asks help, it will show a pattern or, uh, yeah, it will show a pattern that is associated with less cognitive load, less cost or less energy. And at the end, robot will learn uh, through it, uh, interaction. It is a simple uh, model-free uh, learning uh, method. And it will distinguish both interaction partners, a guiding strategy, and find the, uh, find the patterns that are associated with less amount of uh, cost. Basically. Of course, you can say that, OK, this is quite boring grid world. But in robotic case, it's not that simple. It's still, for a single partner, you need to interact with it for more than 20 hours. So it's quite uh, expensive in that sense, time. You can use a, you can adopt this framework in a game setting. 
like a Donkey Kong in here. Instead of finding a pattern in the maze, your agent can uh, locate the letters that are useful to reach and save the sprites or the increase the scores. You can also use a uh, tabletop games with the actual human partner and robot partner in the setting. But again, it will require a lot of time to play with this game and human will get bored. Okay. So from the technical side, we have three different components, as I said. But you can uh, add additional components like explainability as a component in this framework. And the first co uh, component is a multimodal auto-associative memory. Here we have an energy-based model. It's called Hopfield Neural Network, but you can use another one like a deep leaf network. And with that energy-based model, you will have an input image and network will uh, converge into some state. And the operations that reach that steady state, we count as an energy or cost. Then we use this cost to fit in our uh, reward function. Basically, if you are moving from high level, high cost state to the low cost state, you make a right choice and we are rewarding you with uh, plus one. You don't need to use minus one or plus one. You can directly put the energy to the system also. It will work. And lastly, we have a partner preference formation uh, module, which is a, a, a module that provides your agents like tariff bind like functionality. With this module, the robot can infer what kind of strategy that your interaction partner is following and try to avoid that interaction partner during the experiment. And with this setting, basically what you can achieve, you can achieve integrated multimodal information. You can achieve uh, heterogeneous introduction, uh, interaction, <coughs> and you can basically solve this kind of uh, simple uh, maze or game-like problems for your, with your robots. Of course, I introduced a lot of uh, projects in here, and none of them is a solo project. I am working with amazing colleagues, collaboration, uh, collaborating with amazing colleagues. And I hope in my next talk, I can add uh, people from the teamwork also. And lastly, I would like to advertise uh, a workshop that we are organizing in incoming IROS. If you think your research is overlapping with one of the topics in here, please let me know, and I will uh, encourage you to do a short paper submission to our uh, workshop.